Hello everybody and welcome to today's stream where we're once again going to be playing some more Amber's Airlines or as I like to call it in this case Shanahar's Airlines and as you can tell my name is Shanahar or Shanaha or Shahana pretty much whatever you say there's no wrong way so why don't we go ahead then and get started in Amber's Airlines once again if this is your first time joining Amber's Airlines is a game very similar to Dino Dash, if you've ever played one of those games before. Except here it is set in the setting of an airline company as opposed to a restaurant. And this also has a very, I'll say interesting story. It's not very deep, it's uh, actually quite silly, but it's enjoyable nonetheless. So the last time we left off, let's see. We started off at the check-in desk of the airport. Very simple job, you know, not much we can really do there. But we had dreams, we had aspirations rather, to become an air hostess. And we actually tried to, and we were doing fairly well, until one of the requirements in the test was to, s to save people in a swimming pool. But we had a very uh, interesting flashback to a traumatic past where either we were drowning or somebody was drowning but it deeply affected us and resulted in us failing that test to become an air hostess and so instead we made it to the security check area it was kind of a promotion but you know wasn't exactly one what we wanted and eventually after that that's where we met this guy over here uh clark the doctor i suppose or the field doctor and, you know, he's uh, sort of our dream, bo dream boy right now. But thankfully, though, we were lucky enough to be upgraded to the VIP lounge in Tahiti. Or at least, I say upgraded. We were designated to work there. And it just so happened that Clark was going to Tahiti at the same time. So it was very fortuitous that uh, the two of us could meet there. And that was the last time we le left off. So... First things first, we have a new diary entry here, so why don't we go ahead and give that a bit of a read. Let's see. I breathe. What does this diary entry have? Dear diary, it was a strange week in Tahiti. Pamela kept taking me out to all these trendy places, but because I was having so much fun with her, I ended up leaving Elise behind. I felt bad about it. So I took everything I'd bought back to the shops and bought some children's books for Elise. I thought she might like to read it to her kids via webcam. It's the least I could do. You know, that's a very, uh, very sweet thing to do uh, for Amber. Yeah, so the, like I said, there is quite a bit of drama. For example, we recently discovered Pamela, who we thought was quite a bitch because, you know, the whole time we've been trying to get with Clark as our main guy. Pamela kept on trying to butt in and trying to steal the limelight for herself. And uh, they dropped a bit of a bombshell saying that Pamela was recently divorced last year and that's why she's been so craving for attention. Whether or not that's important, I don't know. But without further ado, let's just start it in the new chapter, Airplane, with level 31. Welcome back home, everyone. That was quite a trip. Uh, I guess we're back from Tahiti now. And it seems we have a hero in our midst. I just did what anyone would do. Oh, right, because on the on the flight, somebody was choking. Or not choking, rather. They had an allergic reaction to their peanuts. And I mean, I guess we didn't really do much, but because we helped them out earlier, we were aware of the fact that they always kept their medication on them. So we were able to point out the fact that, you know, oh, quick, check his pockets or something for his, uh, his drugs. So that's what we're getting praised for right now. I, I just do what anyone would do. But not just anyone could do that. Not everyone can say calm in an emergency. You did a great job, Amber. Actually, I have something I need to say. <gasps> oh. I don't think I can be a flight attendant anymore. It's just, I get so nervous, I'm afraid of getting sick, and it's okay to be scared sometimes. Not when it means I can't do my job, 
The stakes are just too high for that. We'll be sorry to see you go, Adrian. Well, let's not get hasty. Now, Adrian, how would you feel about working in security? Well, I hadn't considered that. You're observant and a great people person. And this way, you'll be able to keep both feet on the ground. And what safer place could there be than safety check? That's true, I suppose. It all works out nicely with Amber getting a new job offer too. I am? You've proven your ability to cope in an emergency. Amber, would you like to fill our flight attendant vacancy? <gasps> I mean, yes, of course. You earned it. Excellent. Two birds with one stone. I think that'll be all for today. Let's get ready for our next flight. I don't know if that's uh really the best thing. Like, surely that was just a fluke, you know, where I just happened to know that the guy had medication on them. It doesn't really make up for the fact that, you know, I didn't jump into water to save people, but I mean, sure, if this guy says so, then fine. It was the best call. In future, we should discuss these things before we make any promises. Would you mind helping her learn the ropes? You are our top flight attendant, after all. Fine, but only because you are so nicely. Okay, let's do this. I'm going to be the best flight attendant ever. Oh, okay then. I guess we are now actually getting able to manage planes. So, again, because this is the new chapter, chapter 30, oh, level 31 in chapter 3, it also means that we now have a new area to take care of. Every new area, there's different items and different tasks that we can do. So it's always a, a new learning experience every couple of chapters or so. So let's see, we actually have quite a bit of money, so we can upgrade things right off the bat. What can we upgrade? An Arco door. This new easy open door lets passengers get in and out in less time. Ah, uh, whatever, yeah, some plants. Makes passengers more patient. These seats make people more patient as well. I suppose the same everywhere, all around, yep. Wait, what? Oh, the carpets as well. These handy lights help Amber move faster down the aisles. There's not really that much that we can upgrade. Uh, let's go with the good old the door and the carpets. Uh, oh wow, wait. Is it only the one carpet that got upgraded? Interesting. Huh. Oh well, I think it uh, should be fine. So let's go ahead and see what this level has to offer for us. Uh, the challenge for this one is prove your skills by checking out 10 passengers with golden hearts. That should be easy enough. So far it looks like the only things we can do is give people these sodas and give them night masks as well, I suppose. Oh, or, I guess, have people go to the toilet. But even then, we're not really doing that ourselves. Ah, speaking of masks, there you go. Is this lady just gonna stand the whole time? Is she not gonna... sit? Oh, I see, I see, I see. So some of the people that are sitting down here, once they fill up their stars, or hearts rather, they just, you know, that's them done. Like uh, this guy here who just came back from the toilet. However, the people that were standing over there, they actually move over to the sort of the checkout thing, as you saw, like that lady as well. When she got her golden hearts, that was it. I suppose it's fairly simple then. Uh, let's see, let's give you a mask. And a soda as well. These levels don't seem that bad. There's the mouse that is always in every level. Let's see, give you a soda. The gold, 10 golden hearts should be easy in this actually. There's not really that much frantic running around. It's really nice though that the people that are standing don't have to move anywhere. That was the biggest issue I think in the previous levels where once we got a lot of people coming in, it was a bit of a struggle because so many people would want to go to the same stations or like, you know, the same chairs and things like that. And it was always a mission to try and juggle those. Now though, it seems all fine and dandy. Oh, 
Uh, every now and then we have this type of mini game here. Click the white circles, then slide the button to perform the action. Click the white circles, and then slide the button. Ah, okay. I suppose these are the, the instructions that you normally do before a flight and stuff like that. Like this is this is how you tighten your seatbelt. This is how you put on your mask. And this is how you get the fuck out of here in case we crash and burn. The exits will be to your left, and in case it is a very tragic crash, the exits will be all over the place because, well, we'll be fucked. Let's see though. Uh, give you a drink, and help you out. One, two, drag, and another one, like that. Let's see, there's five people up there, and that's the maximum, so we may as well check these people out. For a nice big combo. Awesome. And it also completes a challenge for us. Give you your mask. Come back down and help you out. And as you can see on the right there, we actually have no masks left, so we have to come over here and refill them. To make sure that we have some ready for these lady over here. But we should be easily be able to achieve the three stars. Actually, I think we can get it right now if we check out that guy. Yep, there we go. So far, this doesn't seem that bad, but as we've seen, things can get a lot more intense. Because as the, the levels progress, more things will be added. Like for example right now, we only have the mask to worry about on the right there. But I can already see it looks like there's a towel and a pillow as well. In that little restocking cabinet that will eventually come into play later I assume. Let's see. And let's quickly do the symbols for you, or the signs rather, not the symbols. Oh, didn't drag it all the way across. And up. There we go. Let's see, and help you out. And you're probably going to want to drink as well, aren't you? Yep, uh, I knew it. And that is the end of that shift. Very simple for the first level. But I mean, it is the first level after all, so it's to be expected. So let's check this guy out, and that'll be that. David, I had the craziest day. Call me when you can. Oh, poor David. Am I going to message Clark as well? Yep. Hey, Clark. I wanted to thank you for helping me save that man on the flight. Also, I've got some good news. I got the flight attendant job. Hope I can see you again soon. Ooh. Poor David. Oh. If only David knew... Oh, David, you're no match for Mr. Clark. Ooh, although we have enough diamonds for a new upgrade, it looks like. I say upgrade. <laughs> it's more of a decoration. Looks like this is a bookmark or something. Let's see. We can either have a red one with uh, some drums on it. A, oh, a fancy little sushi one. Our fish. Oh, ooh, that's a good one. Little plane to symbolize our love for flights. Now then, on to the next level. Fight- oh, not, not fight club, sorry. Light club. Pick up the soap that fell on the floor. Okay, that sounds simple enough. Okay, listen up everyone. We're headed back to Snugford. Elise, I want you up front in business. Amber, you take the economy aisles. Alright. Economy is like the uh, the cheap one, right? Or like the, uh, not really cheap, but I suppose the regular one. Business is more the fancy one, right? Because first class and then business and then economy, I think. I'm not too up to date with the uh, flight lingo. I don't really go flying myself too often. No need to rush, sir. Why do you have so much soap on you, dude? 
Oh no. Hmm. No problem, sir. I'll soon gather them up. But like, why did you have so much soap though? What the fuck? Well, I mean, at least I can already see all three of them there, right? So that should be easy for this challenge to pick them all up. Wait, there's more? Oh my goodness. Uh, oh, I see some of them. One there, one there. And... What is this? Oh, some people can want a bag of chips as well now. Uh, let's see then. And I'm gonna assume that there's gonna be a third drink, or sorry, rather a third drink, another type of drink in that middle compartment between the chips and the, the soda. Probably gonna be a blue drink. As, uh, if it's anything like the previous levels. But there's always a red and blue thing. Ooh, raise your hands up. Ooh, raise your hands up again. And once again, raise your hands. Give you your drink. When people are really thirsty, they want a lot of these drinks. And let's quickly grab one of these, serve you out, and then help the lady down bottom. Let's see, and uh, jeez. It's really picking up the face now. Everybody's wanting something. There is no respite for air hostesses, I suppose. Oh, I should have picked up two while I had the chance. That is the sort of the golden rule of these types of games, efficiency. So if you're gonna do something, at least try and pick up some other things while you're at it to save time. Let's see. Oh, there's a mouse. I'll help you out. And this is gonna be the mini game. Oh, drag that across. And drag that up. I will say though, it does seem like having Amber on this flight is a very pleasant experience. I know, I mean, I haven't flown much, but I always hear horror stories of what it's like to fly on a plane. Normally, the air hostess crew is obviously very kind and stuff like that, but it's more about other passengers that are always a problem that I hear about. For one thing, nobody, oh, okay, well, there's only one person, or two, two people, rather, I suppose, that are sit, sit right next to each other. These two guys here right at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Normally, flights are super packed, right? And normally, it's not even the best situations where if you have somebody sitting next to you, they're for lack of better words, rather big in that um, <laughs> they don't really stick to their seat. If that makes, uh, if you get what I mean. It's either stuff like that or, you know, the, ooh, that was close. I just got the three hearts. The stereotype of a kid behind you kicking your chair or something like that. Or maybe if there's a baby on board, that kid is always crying and stuff like that. So these flights are, in comparison, seem to be much calmer. Let's see, helping everybody out here. But like I said, I'm not too up to date with flights myself, seeing as I don't really go flying that often. I think I've mentioned this before, but I've only ever flown, I think, maybe twice. And even then, that was when I was much younger, so I don't really remember much. But I had, I suppose, fairly fine experiences when I was flying. Granted, they were very short flights, like two hours, I think, at most. Let's quickly check all of these people out that are waiting here. Awesome. And then give these people what they want. Speaking of like flying and stuff like that though, I mean, I know it's a bit of a weird segue, but it just reminded me of 
you know, flying leads to international flights, right? Going across countries and then multiple countries made me think of the Olympics that are recently started. I know, I, I actually, I completely forgot that the Olympics were a thing that was happening. And it is interesting that, you know, even though it is 2021, they're still calling it the 2020 Olympics, just because it was supposed to be last year, but they were postponed it to this year. I suppose it makes sense, right? You don't want to just cancel it outright, but... It's, uh, it's something that I never really paid too much attention to, the Olympic Games. I mean, obviously, I knew it was a thing every four years you have the Olympic Games, but... I feel like I'm more invested in it now this year, purely because of the fact that it was delayed. So there's sort of a... Not really an expectation, but... Yeah! It's almost like this extra hype that's been built up to it. As you know, it's not like the FIFA World Cup that everybody always hears about. Thanks, Amber. You were great. You're welcome. It was great meeting you. This isn't a social gathering, Amber. You're right. Sorry, Karen. All right, y'all. Her name's Karen because, I mean, of course it is. Look at her. Look at the way she looks and look at the way she talks. Ooh, David. Amber, I wanted to give you a ride home. Thanks, David. That's really nice of you. So, tell me what, tell me everything. How was Tahiti? Did you meet any interesting people? Oh, boy. Tahiti was... Okay. Just okay? Well, tell me more about your amazing new promotion, then. I still can't believe it. Oh, it's a crazy story. It all started with this really nice guy who had an allergy. But poor David. If only you knew about Mr. McDreamy that we met. Ooh, a new minigame. Close the belt, slide and tighten passenger seatbelts to make sure they're safe during the flight. You wonder if there's any Amber fan art? I mean, <laughs> welcome, for, uh, firstly welcome, never gonna give you up. And uh, hope you're having a great day. And you know, I'm almost certain that there's probably some Amber fan art out there. What, what is it? Rule, um, rule 34, right? If it exists, well, you know, there is most likely some fan art of it. Oh, this is a simple one. Just find all the mice. I've had enough of these motherfucking rats. Oh, not rats, sorry. Mice on this motherfucking plane. It'd be cool if these were snakes, actually, instead. Uh, there's one diamond. And oh my, it does look like there's a lot more items now, though. Like I said, instead of just the mask, we now have the a pillow and a, I guess it's a towel on the right hand side. And there's also a new drink, a blue drink there in the middle. And there's even food uh, food items on the left side as well. There's like a burger and a hot dog. I'm sad that it isn't a, you know, the, the stereotypical chicken or beef, but uh, I suppose that'll do. Oh, and it actually looks like in the middle up there as well. There's, it's frozen hot dogs and frozen hamburgers that we have to defrost to put them out on the left as well. That's going to be interesting. I don't even know why I'm clicking anymore. I already have the, the max score. There we go. End of shift. Yeah, never going to give you up. I am almost certain that there is fan out of Amber out there. Especially because as niche as this game is, right? Uh... These types of Dino Dash style games aren't really the most popular. This game, or at least this series, was successful enough that there's not just one Amber's Airlines game, there's actually a sequel to this game as well, so there's definitely an audience for these types of games at least. Let's see, girls want to have fun. Take care of the annoying kid. Oh, I see now. This is gonna be more of a real situation, I suppose, where there's an annoying kid on the plane. Oh, there he is on the left there. Little brat. Amber, why isn't the coffee brewing? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize. It takes a lot of power to heat water. We always prepare some beforehand. But, won't it get cold? <sighs> we store the pre-made coffee in the thermal containers to retain the heat. I'll get right on it. You're only finding furries? Oh. oh, wait. 
You're only finding fairies when you're Googling Amber. Ugh. I feel like that's a that's another rule. That might oh I don't even know if there is a rule, but the rule 34 is that if there's porn, you know, there's always uh oh no sorry, if there's porn. <laughs> if the character exists, there's always porn of it. But I feel like there's another rule that no matter where you look, if you go deep enough, there will be furry furry version of whatever it is that you're looking for. You gotta up your search reps. I mean, you know, sometimes it's uh <laughs> it's it just reminds you of um not that I would know, but when you're trying to find that one perfect video to uh to make use of late at night in your alone time and you start going through all the different pages trying to find that one perfect video that it just scratches that itch just right. <laughs> sort of makes me think of that. Hey, don't let it get to you. I guess I just feel a little, a little unwelcome. Okay, she's gone. Look, Karen's hard on everyone. It's just the way she is. Plus, I mean, with a name like Karen, what are you going to expect? Yeah, but... Really, there's no use worrying about it. Just check with me if you have any questions. Oh, by the way, there's an annoying child in this flight. Be sure to keep an eye on him. Wow. I wonder if air hostesses gossip like that about people on the plane. Be careful, there's a, a big fat fuck on aisle 32. Make sure he gets his food or else he'll get angry. Uh, let's see. Ooh, the microwave. Version 1.2. Or 12, rather, sorry. A new wave technology developed by R Oral2 lets you heat food faster. I mean, isn't that just turn the heat up? I don't really know if that's fancy new technology, but hmm. Oh my goodness, I don't know why, but that kid just looks, he looks the part. He's got like the, the I don't want to be mean, but like he's got that douchey style um, hair, you know, slicked up. Makes me think of the... The guys from Greece. The the Greasers actually. Oh, that, that is their name, yeah. Let's see, let's do these. So obviously this challenge is sort of the almost like a ticking time bomb that you have to take care of. Every now and then I just have to make sure and I calm him down. Let's see. Let's give you your burger. Oh not a burger, sorry. Hot dog. And grab you your mouth. Oh my goodness. I didn't expect the kid to actually make noise. He's crying. What are you crying for, you little bitch? There you go. I'm glad at least the, the calming down thing is just is literally just go up to him once and click on him. So I can let him get to as low as I want, but as long as I click on him before he goes to absolute zero, then it'll be fine. I will say though that... I mean, maybe it's a good thing that he makes that uh, crying sound. It's a good indication that he's needs to be tended to, like right now. Let's see, grab this and that. But as I was saying earlier, before this level, uh, being reminded about the Olympics, I was very, like, again, I knew the Olympics was happening on uh, Friday, this past Friday, or that it was starting then. And, uh, you know, I wasn't really going to pay too much attention to it, but I ended up rather intrigued by it because of the fact that the opening ceremony happened on Friday and I didn't watch it. I didn't plan on watching it because, I mean, it's the opening ceremony. I know some people think that that is the, the main reason why you want to watch it, right? You see the, the big fanfare that they do and all that stuff. But I was intrigued because apparently I found out that for the opening ceremony obviously they had a set, a set list of music to like march into and everything like that. And the entire list of music they used for the opening ceremony was apparently all from video games. Which, uh, I suppose it makes sense, you know, Japan, sort of known for their video games. And, uh, I will say, I really liked the, the lineup of songs that they had. They had, like, some Final Fantasy songs, uh, Metal Gear songs, I think. Ace Combat songs as well. It was really cool, actually. Uh, I was surprised that there was no Nintendo songs, considering, you know, that's what they're known for. I mean... Heck, they even made a... Was it a... Was it, I don't know if it was Sega or Nintendo, technically speaking, but they had a Mario and Sonic Olympic Games game, literally. So I feel like it was a, a bit of a waste to not use the 
any of the sound uh, songs from that game. But yeah, the the Olympic Games I'm not really too concerned about, especially because it's I don't know it's it's a summer Olympic Games, right? So it's mostly or the ones that everybody knows about is the athletic stuff, right? Like the 100 meter sprints, the acrobatics, maybe stuff like that. Which uh oh oh I don't have any hot dogs prepared. So let's quickly do that. Uh uh oh. We're in a bit of a pickle now, we're running out of uh, time. Uh, the guy with hot dog, you're gonna have to wait, I'm sorry. You're gonna be the sacrifice. You're gonna be the one order we don't do. Uh, wait, what? Why can I not, uh, what do I have to do for the, the hot dogs? To get them going. Hmm. Well, let's first serve everybody else. I'm sorry, man, but you're gonna have to suffer with no hot dog for you. Pause on the seatbelt by moving the buckle to the hook, then tighten it by pulling the strap. There we go. And there's your one as well. Oh my gosh, somebody else wants a hot dog. Oh. Is it this? Oh, I see now. I had to get the plate first and then put the hot dog on it. Can't just put the hot dog in like raw. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that takes incredibly long to heat up the hot dog. Why is it taking so long? Oh, I see now. It was green. I just, uh, it was a lot faster than I thought. I just was slow. Ah, and I also got to take care of the kid. All right. Now that I know how to work the, the microwave, let's restart this level. Right then let's not make that mistake again and let's go oh got to pick up the drink wait why can i not pick up the drink hello amber please that's interesting let me try again just to see if the mouse may be bugged up for that But yeah, coming back to the Olympics, uh, that's very interesting. Why is it not working? Let me let me restart the game. Uh, and hopefully that'll fix it. But in the meantime, so the Olympics, I know a lot of people are not really excited for it, but you know, they have their interest peaked in it. Maybe it's because um, my country is pretty shitty, so I doubt we'll actually do anything decent in the Olympic Games. So I'm not really eager to support or anything but I know my roommate was talking about the recently it was a big upset because Japan apparently beat America in the softball which I thought eh whatever to be fair the Japanese are very fond of baseball so I imagine softball would be similar in terms of its popularity uh, but let's see is it up back then? here we are But I remember, I think the last time I was this, oh, not really this, but the last time I was interested in the Olympic Games was in the previous Winter Olympics, where the main reason I sort of looked into it was because of one specific event. It was the, I guess you'd call it figure skating. And um, what was his name? It was a Japanese figure skater. I think his name was Yuzuru Hanyu. He was... Obviously, he was very talented as a figure skater himself, but the other big highlight was how kind he was. There we go, we can actually pick up items. But I remember one of the clips I saw of the Winter Olympics was... I think he obviously won, he came first, but he decided to... Sort of, not really step down, but he decided to share the podium with the second place person. Which is very kind and sweet-hearted. And then I know, um, I think it was the same guy, but uh, later on, when, because he was also small, relatively speaking, to the other competitors, so at the end, the other two competitors sort of lifted him up to make him as tall as them, which was pretty cute. 
you know, uh, pick them up one in each or each one picking up an arm and raising him up, be as tall as them, which is pretty funny. But I know Japan has uh, been getting a lot of flack lately because of the Olympics. Both in terms of the fact that, you know, they're holding it. Because I know people were very concerned. But also, <laughs> apparently, a lot of the Japanese politicians have been getting into shit because of things they've said. <laughs> With regards to the Olympics. Uh, the curling matches were quite fun to watch during the Winter Olympics. Really, the curling matches? That, that's the one with the... Um, where you like just throw the block of ice in the th yo just throw like a big disc or like a rock or something like that and have it slide toward the target right what made the curling matches interesting to watch or you know that face that you added never gonna give you up or that emote makes me think that you were watching it not for the curling matches but for maybe the uh, the competitors uh, correct me if I'm mistaken but uh, I feel like that's the type of things that you'd be interested in with regards to the curling matches. Yep, there's that mouse. I will say though, now that you bring it up, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe maybe I was mistaken. Mm -hmm. Aside from the actual sport, there's a lot of, of good, good clips to see from uh, Olympic Games. Especially the, uh, what is it? Like the sprinters. Uh, let's see. I still remember. I don't know if it was from the Olympics, but one of the sort of a, a clip on YouTube that I always see coming up is of this one. I think she's Brazilian or something. A, a pole vaulter or something like that. I, I just remember because she had a very big pole in her hands, which I realize now sounds weird, but uh, you know what I mean for pole vaulting. But um, and I always see the comments are saying like she scored a perfect ten. And then she went for the jump and stuff like that. Oh, actually, now that I, now that you were thinking about this, the uh, the one team sport that I would very much look forward to, I think, in the Summer Olympics is the the women's volleyball, which is uh, you know always fun to watch. To be fair, volleyball itself is just fun, actually. I think even the men's volleyball. Not to say that I'd be watching the women's volleyball for ulterior motives, but volleyball's just kind of cool to watch. Uh, ooh, let's quickly help out that kid. And let's give that hot dog to the lady down there. Ooh, are we going to get the chips to the guy in time? Oh, just missed it, I think. Wait, who lost a heart? Oh, it's the guy behind him. I couldn't tell because of the, the guy in front of him was taking up that spot. Let's see. Buckle you up. Nice and tight. Give you your hot dog. And give these two people their drinks. I'm not even sure uh, what other sports are played in the Summer Olympics. I mean, like, even when you mentioned curling now, I'm never gonna give you up. I immediately thought, oh, curling, that's, um, that's a summer sport, right? Surely. Because of the fact that, I mean, okay, maybe, maybe it's very twisted in my head, but curling is very cold, right? It's, uh, I mean, it's on ice. So surely... You'd want to do it when it's hot because you want to cool down. But now that I think about it, it's maybe it is better to do it in winter because you know to keep the ice cold. Because <laughs> in my head, I know, uh, like with school sports, we had cricket, and cricket was a summer sport because you want to play it in summer since you don't want to be running around a lot since it's already so hot. Oh my goodness, the kid's still crying even after the level.
who just leaves half eaten food lying on the floor. A remarkably large number of people. You'll be delighted to learn. So, Japan. Oh, how fortuitous. And we're just talking about the, the Japan Olympics right now. Have you ever been there before? I was so caught up in the work, I almost forgot where we were. How about I show you around? Let's go for a walk. It's beautiful here. Maybe they're going to see the 2021, or oh, sorry, 2020 Olympics. Hey Pamela, want to join us for a stroll? I was just telling Amber how beautiful Japan is at this time of year. Heck yeah, I'd love to. Uh oh. How about you three? Interested in taking a walk around town? No thanks. Nah, I'm good. I'm meeting an old friend in town. Maybe I'll catch up with you later. Suit yourselves. Sounds like a girls night out then. Sake- Oh, s sake. Sake and sushi, here we come. Alright, an amazing job. Earn 12 hearts in the safety instructions minigame. Oh my god, yes! I love those kimonos! I just we'd wish we'd had more time to shop. So many things I wanted to buy. We'll be back. This is a pretty common stop for us. Yes! Awesome! Okay, so these three are turbo weebs, I assume. What was the name of that awesome sake? Something like... Hey, that's enough chit chat. We're all on the clock, so get to it. Ah, and there's a, now a pillow up there, I see. Alright, let's uh, upgrade these to make people a bit more patient. Let's go ahead and restock these as well since you can get a maximum of three. So yeah, pillow for you and a night mask for you. And help you out. Grab a pillow for the guy in the far left. I wonder can I how many hot dogs can I have lined up as well? Maybe I can have three, if it's anything like the other stuff on the right there. Oh yeah, three. That'll definitely help to keep more of those stocked up. But yeah, coming back to the, uh, <laughs> the women's volleyball team and uh, talk about just uh, admiring the, the athletes. I know one of the big... I don't even know if it's a stereotype or not, because it's almost been confirmed, but apparently a big thing when it comes to the Olympic Games is the Olympic Village, right? Which is the, I suppose it's the, what you would call the place where all the athletes stay for the entire duration of the Olympic Games, right? Apparently, or at least supposedly, there's a lot of sex that goes on down there, which I mean... After looking at some of those athletes, for example, the curling team, never gonna give you up, uh, which I'm sure you're a fan of, or in my case, some of the, um, I don't even know what you would call them, the, the field athletes, the people that do long jump, pole jumping, uh, this running, all that type of stuff. You know, they definitely are quite appealing to look at. And so, I imagine then, when you're in that Olympic village surrounded by all those pretty people, you know, one thing leads to another, and uh, it all, <laughs> I don't want to call it like natural selection, but it's almost like the the gene pool in the Olympic Village during that time period. It's like if a superhero is gonna be born, it's gonna be out of somebody, something happening there. You know, you've got like the fastest people, the strongest people, the most athletic people ever, all in one spot. It's like, it's almost like an experiment waiting to happen. It's a, it literally sounds like something out of a, like a movie. Taking genes from the strongest people to try and create the ultimate human being. Ah, I missed out on the heart there. I was a bit too slow. Hopefully I can still get the, the challenge though. 
But the reason why I say that is because, um, a number of reasons. One, I know, what was her name? The, the one, I think she's an MMA fighter, Ronda Rousey. She mentioned, now don't quote me on this, but I think she mentioned about how, you know, before fights, supposedly sex was one of the, the best things that you could do. Awesome. It's something to do with the hormones. Like either it releases the hormones or it helps build up the hormones or something like that. Which uh, was quite the eye opener to me. You know, imagine being a fighter and one of the one of the things you have to do, right? It's uh, make sure you go on a diet to check your weight, go on runs regularly, and also don't forget to have sex. <laughs> and the other thing that made me think about it was uh, supposedly I think in the the last Summer Olympics, which I think was in Brazil, if I'm not mistaken, they had to uh, they had to apparently. Or apparently they, they, they did hand out free condoms for all the Olympic athletes. And uh, apparently they literally ran out of free condoms for the for the athletes because of how many they used, I suppose. You think they're not allowed to leave the Olympic Village in Tokyo? Ah, I think that makes sense though. Especially because of, you know, COVID and everything. I mean, I, I assume it's a... Uh, it was one of the stipu... <coughs> oh, sorry. One of the stipulations that they Japan had to put in. Because, I mean, think about it. You have literally people from all over the world um, coming in. I don't even know if they all have to be vaccinated. But, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, actually, nothing about it. I was talking about how, imagine, you know, people get it on in the Olympic Village and the ultimate, you know, superhuman baby is born. Or alternatively, because of COVID, literally all of the strongest people in the world you know, touch wood. All the strongest people in the world start getting uh, affected. That would be quite quite the outcome. Uh, I hope somebody asks for the what is it that mini game with the the instructions so I can get that challenge done because it is getting very close to the end. Don't tell me that that one heart that I missed out on is going to be what screws me over. I think it might be the one heart that I missed out on that screws me over. Yep. Oh well. We still got the three stars at least. You miss me, Sushi? I went to your homeland. Is... I mean, I don't know if that fish is from Japan, technically speaking. I mean, yes, yeah, Sushi, you named him that, but are clownfish is native to Japan? This job is so amazing. I wish I could take you along. Guess I'll just have to bring you plenty of souvenirs instead. I don't think Karen likes me very much. This job is so important to me, I don't want to mess it up. I'll just have to work harder. I got this. Ooh, a new mini game. Trolley hidden object. Find the item the passenger wants from the trolley. Let's repair it. The microwave is malfunctioning. Ah, move out the way so I can see what she wants. Ah, okay, she wants a, a red drink. Now a pillow. Move your seatbelt up like that. Oh. And uh oh. Wow. That is quite the malfunction to have like literal siren lights going off like that. That would actually be very scary if your microwave suddenly started doing that. Some chips. God. Ah! Microwave. No! Please don't explode. Okay, and grab your mask up there. Oh! I have to give you that. Ah. 
But uh, yeah, speaking about the the Olympic athletes and all that stuff, it just got me thinking about um, a recent anime I actually started watching that I really started enjoying. It's an anime called Hajime no Ippo. It's a boxing anime. It's fairly old. Old. I say old. It started out in like the the 2000s, 2004, I think. And uh, now, obviously. Ah. Now, obviously, it's uh, gone for quite a while. But uh, it's been something I've really been enjoying, actually. Not that common for mobile games. That's true, I suppose. Uh, mobile games do ha tend to be like that. Like, I know, actually, there's... Um, there's not necessarily this game. Mm -hmm. But in this, like, franchise of things, there's another game similar. And apparently it's very bad. Like, it's a mobile game, or mainly a mobile game. But, um... Yeah, not... The... I know, um... The, the mobile aspect of that game is very bad because of the... The progression. It is literally gated behind paying. It, it kinda sucks. Which makes games like this... Surprising in, uh... How good they are. Although, you know, we're talking about the plotline. Let's not uh, get too hyped about it. It is a very, uh, I wouldn't call it a bad plotline, but it's a very simple plot. I mean, like I said, even Dino Dash didn't have a, a plot. It was just serving people. Ooh, this might get a bit messy. That guy wants a hot dog as well. But we need to fix this first. And quickly force my seatbelt. Oh! You also want a hot dog. My goodness. Uh, let's see, you want that. But yeah, it is a nice, pleasant surprise that there's an actual story to follow along with. So it helps you get invested in the game. Uh, oh my goodness, breaks him down again. But yeah, coming back to the, the anime I was talking about, uh, Hajime no Ippo. It's a, it's a boxing anime, and I don't know why, but those, um, I used to call it sports-based anime, are surprisingly really intense and uh, really fun to get into. Can I make it in time? Ugh. Oh my goodness, all I hear is the hearts going down and down on all these people. What are the hand gestures that Amber does? Uh, I assume the one that you're talking about in that mini game. Awesome. It is the... I suppose it's the, the onboarding stuff, you know? Like when they say, Oh, here are the exits. Here is how you fasten your seatbelt. Here is how you... Um, like put on your mask and stuff like that. So I suppose that those are the things that it's trying to imitate. Although I'll admit it's, it's very bad hand gestures. I don't think it's actual things. To be fair, I don't. I think the, the few times that I've been on a plane, like the one or two times, I don't remember them doing the whole hand gesture thing. I feel like it's something that it's sort of been appropriated by movies. But yeah, they're, they're supposed to be the... Uh, Sort of the, the flight instructions, but like like we saw the one of the gestures that she does is where she literally just raises her hands up in the air. So unless the hand gesture is here's what you do when you panic and we're crashing down, you you raise your hands up in the air, open up your mouth and you scream ah! Then other than that, I can't think of what that gesture is supposed to be. Oh my goodness, that was a lot of. Uh, Failed hearts, but we got the we got the three diamonds though, so that's all that matters. It was messy in how we did it, but we were able to do it. You the pillow. Why does it keep having this arrow over here? Cool. And last but not least, do you want a soda? There we go. 
that was Zach Challenge done. Amber the tour guide. Provide info about nearby landmarks using the microphone. Do people do that on planes? I know they do that on uh, tour buses, but... Hmm. Wake up, Sushi. You need to wish me good luck today. I can't believe it. I'm a flight attendant. Finally. Oh. Around and around we go. Oh, okay. Ooh, who are we getting a message from? Ooh, David. So, Amber, where are you off to this time? Berlin! Then we go via Helsinki on the way back. Going to be amazing! Have fun, smiley face. I'll be thinking of you. Oh, David. Oh, poor, poor David. If only he knew that there's another man in our heart. Good old Clark. Amber, you're late. I have an extra job for you today. We'll be flying over a few interesting places, and I'd like you to announce them for the passengers. Sure thing. I mean, are there really that many interesting things you can see on a plane? I mean, sure, maybe if you're flying over something like the pyramids where you can actually see them, or like the Great Wall of China. But I mean, could you just imagine, you're, you're trying to fall asleep, you know? You're relaxing, you know, you're spending, you don't want to get jet lagged, so you're taking a, a nice little nap. And then all of a sudden, Amber busts in on the microphone. Um, yes, if you look to your left, you would actually see, it's very nice. It is the Atlantic Ocean. It is very blue. And if you look on the right, it is more of the Atlantic Ocean. It is also very blue. That is uh, the landmarks for today. I'll keep you updated in the next hour. But, uh, oh well. I can't really imagine what all there would be that you could look at. They'd have to fly pretty low. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, the only reasons why I mentioned um, the pyramids and the Great Wall of China is because... Actually, I'm not even sure about the pyramids, but I know the Great Wall of China, it's supposedly you can see it all the way from space. Which, uh, I don't know. Now that I think about it, yes, it is big. But it's also very narrow and thin, so I'm not really sure if you'd be able to pick it out like that. Although maybe, maybe in order to see it, they'd have to fly like how some people fly in, um, what is it? Microsoft Flight Simulator, where I remember the big meme was that people would, they would get the game and they would try and find their own house and fly directly into it. <laughs> of how supposedly realistic the the map was. Oh, we're gonna actually announce it. Welcome to Finland. Finland has a great food culture and a real culinary identity. Don't hesitate to test the Korvapusti or the Reslipa. Wow, was that the announcement, Amber? Dude, I'd be pissed if somebody <laughs> open up the intercom just to say that. Hey guys, here's Finland! Alright, that's Finland for you. Don't forget to try these two dishes that you're probably never gonna taste because, you know, we're not actually stopping at Finland, we're just passing over it. Uh, let's see. I need to be careful about these people that line up here in the in the standing aisle because of the fact that they get blocked by the other person's wants. What is what is that last one supposed to be? That last one where arms are to the side, is that just her like giving up on life? Uh yes, if you are ever confused as to what to do, just raise your arms to each side and say, fuck this, I give up. Uh oh. Okay, there we go. Got her thing just in time. And then let's do the announcement. Where are we going to fly over this time? Ooh, also, there's a mouse that I can see. We are now flying over Germany. The German cuisine is rich in diversity. Is that all you can talk about? The food? You can savor a currywurst, a Franzbrötchen, or a Maltaschen in Stuttgart. 
Okay, Amber, enough about the food, right? Listen, we get it, you're hungry. Is there nothing more interesting you can talk about? And hand you some chips. I'm surprised there's no... What is it? Uh, peanuts that they normally offer on planes, and it's crisps and a soda instead. Quickly give you your hot dog. Let's check these people out first. Oh. People are getting impatient. Put your hands up in the air and scream. Wow! And then do it again for good measure. Ah! And then this. Oh, I suppose on the left we can see the card that it's meant to indicate. So that was supposed to be, I suppose, putting on your your uh, oxygen mask. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Buckle your seatbelt up. Let's see, where are we flying over today? Or now? Welcome to Italy. Italian food is some of the best in the world. Again with the food, come on Amber. And of course, it's best when accompanied with some, by some local wine. Wow, you're not gonna even name some of the dishes like you did at other places? Maybe the cuisine isn't that great after all. You can't even think of, of one of their names. Uh, oh. Let's give you a drink. And you. Oh my goodness, everybody wants a burger. Or hot dog, rather, sorry. And get a pillow up for that guy. restock the masks as well. Hopefully I can still get the, the three stars. Gonna be a bit close I think. I've been losing a lot of hearts. Ah, it looks like we have our last I suppose, announcement. Where are we going to fly over this time, Amber? And what food are you going to tell us about today? And finally, we have Spain. Spanish cuisine has been influenced by many discoveries made during its various conquests. From tomatoes and potatoes to vanilla and chocolate. You'll never run out of options here. Ah, uh, Amber. Such a foodie. Ah, what does she want? I can't tell. be able to make it. Let's give me that. And let's grab a mask for that lady in the black. Okay, that's good. We've got some hot dogs up in reserve now. We might be able to get three stars once we check all these people out. There we go. Awesome. And even with all those uh, those hearts that we lost, we're still able to get the three stars. And lastly, you want a drink. I know she's gonna love this ring. Ooh. Oh, um, morning, Amber. Somebody's getting married. What was all that about? Was that a ring? Well, none of my business. At least I'm not the maddest one here. Nor the only one speaking to myself. Let's 
to the next stage. Cornelian Choice. Never have more than one item on your tray at any time. Ooh, that's gonna be... That's gonna be a bit tough. Morning, Amber. You're up early. Lots to do. If... Oh, wait. Did, do we sleep on this plane as well? You're awfully early, Amber. I think I beat the sunrise this morning. Trouble sleeping? Karen asked me to come in early and set up the food. What? Why? That's not normal. That's something we usually do together now. A pretty girl like you needs her beauty sleep. Next time, you go ahead and give me a shot. I'll help you. Thanks, Elise. Hmm. Oh, this- I, I absolutely need this. Making passengers more patient? Absolutely. Give you a soda. And only having one thing at a time is going to be very difficult. Because that was one of the biggest advantages of that tray. You know, if you see somebody in the bottom left wants both a, a pillow and somebody else wants a mask, you can go up and pick them both up so that you save time. Let's see, and you want a soda. And let's go ahead and do the hand justice for you. Scream with your hands in the air. Scream with your hands in the air again. And then lastly, tighten the mask. Ah, I'm a start on a heart. Ah, let's give you a mask. Yeah, what was I talking about earlier? Oh, right, the, uh, the Hachime no Ippo anime series that I've been watching or getting into recently. Well, how do we get onto that anyway? Alright, oh, because we were talking about admiring um, the Olympic athletes and, uh, you know, all the sports and stuff like that. But yeah, it's a... Hajime no Ippo, if you haven't seen it, it's, um, like I said, it's a boxing anime. But I don't know why, but sports shows, for anime at least, are surprisingly really good, all things considered. I know, you know, everybody likes the action of uh, the fantasy shows where you can have all these cool sword fights or battles and crazy things like that. But there's something about a sports anime where only one can wait and wait and wait once. Ooh. Okay, let's make sure we serve these people here in the waiting room. But um, the fact that with the boxing anime, it's, it's sort of grounded in reality. You know, there's... um. You can link it to real life things, boxing like, oh, it's, it's not like where you have, say, Dragon Ball Z where, oh, he's now charging up his Super Kamehameha. Oh, now he's going to use his Kaioken and go Super Saiyan. It's, um, it's a lot more palatable, you know? People doing actual human things that you can sort of comprehend, like, oh, he's doing a, an, an uppercut. He's doing a punch. Oh, okay, that makes sense. And not this silly nonsense of, Oh, he's using his super duper ultra hyper move. He's transforming and stuff like that. And you know, like, let's say there's a training arc. At the end of it, it's not like, oh, he's now unlocked the ability to go super ultra mega saiyan. It's just that, oh no, now he's actually just, you know, gotten legitimately stronger as a person. You heard it's, uh, it's good? Yeah, it, it's, it is, um, it's very enjoyable. Like, so far, I've only watched the first, I think, like, 16 episodes or so. But, uh, it's been... Those 16 episodes have been very fun to watch. Uh, what do you want? The salad looks like. And you also want a can of, I guess, a pear. And raise your hands up. The cool thing about the, the Hachime no Ipa as well is that Normally, when there's sort of like, I don't want to call it fights, but like, you always see the aspect of the winner's side, right? 
For example, I always come back to other like shonen anime where it's like say Dragon Ball Z or stuff like that. Where the one person wins and that's it. But for Tajime no Ippo, the interesting thing is that it also goes pretty much very into detail about the other side, or like the other the other uh, competitor. Because obviously the main character is Ippo, so it's mainly focused around his story and you know how he goes to be stronger, the reasons why he's fighting and stuff like that. But um, in this anime, it also explains the competitor's side as well, and it makes it really interesting as well. Where you know normally. And other things, the person would lose and that's it, you know, you can forget about that. But it really makes you invested in both sides of the story. To a point where you kind of actually want both people to win. I mean, obviously, Ippo, the main character, you would want to win because, you know, he's the guy that you follow with all the time. But it makes you sad when you realize that the other person lost because of all the things they've been going through as well. Which is, I think it's really good. It's not many shows can do that. Raise your hands up again. And... There we go. Let's see, a red ring for you up top there. Ooh, both of them want to go to the bathroom. Let's see. Give you a pack of chips. See what he's done. Is that other guy in? Let's see, a drink for the one guy, and a mask for the lady up top. I is she kissing the passenger? I mean... <laughs> Listen, I... Maybe it's uh, during the night. What is it? The, the nighttime flights. That might be a service that could be done. What, what is it called? Uh, joining the Mile High Club, right? Are we going to have enough to get three stars? And welcome, Layla, to uh, Amber's Airlines. I will say, it's, uh, if she is kissing the passengers, it wouldn't be the, the weirdest thing that she's been doing. I mean, if you see some of the hand gestures she does, uh, where she lifts her hands up. Like, the, every now and then you'll see, when I go up to one of the passengers, I have to do the... Sort of the, the hand gestures, right? One of them is she literally just raises her hands up in the air. Which, I don't know what that would be useful for in, in a flight, but it's one of the safety instructions, so... Yeah. And also, hello, yes, hello. It's 10 out of 10 service, yeah. I mean, early on, Never Gonna Give You Up was very curious about if there would be Amber fan art. So... I feel like never gonna give you up is the type of person that would be requesting that type of service from Amber. Hey, are you doing anything tonight? I'm going to video chat with my kids. I want to read them a story before bed tonight. How about you, Pam? Interested in getting a drink or something? Nah, uh, not tonight. I've got a date. I took a page from your book and started chatting with a few of the passengers. Oh my goodness. Maybe they are getting a little bit uh, handsy with some of the passengers. I feel like that's a bit out of line to organize dates with your passengers. Hmm. You know, the cute ones in particular. Oh my goodness. Layla, you may have been onto something. Oh, we got a little buzz. And David. Hope you're having fun, Amber. Thinking of you. Oh, poor David. Oh, and then Clark comes in with the message follow-up. Enjoying your adventure so far? Ooh, who are we gonna, gonna respond to? Oh, David and Clark. Huh, maybe we could hang out when you get back. Hope we cross paths again soon. Maybe next time without a health emergency at 30,000 feet. Winky face. Oh no, you two. What a love triangle that's developing. Uh, your search failed to yield any results? Well, never gonna give you up. Maybe you can be the uh, the change we want to see in the world. Maybe you can come up with the, the very first Amber fan art. 
and maybe taking inspiration from Layla. It can be of her uh, providing some service to the passengers. The weather is very bad today. Okay. I guess I don't know what that means, but sure. But in case you were wondering, by the way, um, that love triangle between Amber, David, and Clark. David is sort of our, uh, and there's the the hands up in the air expression that I spoke about, Layla. Like, I don't know why this is important for safety inspections, but uh, it is there. But yeah, David is. I suppose he's like our childhood friend. He's been supporting us before we even became a, a flight attendant. And he's very much trying to get in there with Amber. Like, oh my goodness. I guess that's the, the bad weather they were talking about. But yeah, David, like he would come by and... Um, oh, it shuffled around the items as well. David would come by and surprise us with movie nights and stuff like that and, you know, put us, carry us like a princess to bed when we pass out on the couch. And, for example, he even, like, he leaves notes behind after he leaves saying, like, oh, you know, it was such a nice time with you and you're so pretty when you fall asleep, which, in hindsight, sounds a bit creepy. Um, and, you know, you could see, by the way, he spoke to us. He's very eager to try and set up dates and uh, see us again. Me my goodness. Meanwhile, good old Clark, that other guy, we met very recently. Um, we met him technically at work. He's a... Uh, like a field medic, I suppose. And um, he's very dreamy, you know. Uh, oh wow, he saves lives. He's so kind and sweet. And we actually met him again in Tahiti, because we were... That is actually very disturbing, the, the quakes and stuff like that. The, um... We met him in Tahiti because we were both going there for... He, well, he had to go there for work, and we were upgraded to work there at the station. And we even had a, a nice little date at the beach and stuff like that. And obviously the, the whole time while we were in Tahiti, you know, away from home, David was like, I don't want to say pestering us, but he was constantly messaging us, asking us, Oh, I can't wait for you to get back. Oh, I'm missing you so much. Oh, I'm thinking about you. Which, in hindsight, it does sound quite creepy, you know. And, um, I'm pretty sure Amber doesn't really want much to do with him because she very much sees David as nothing more than just a friend. At least for now. But I think... The way she reacted to both David and Clark's messages, maybe she is getting a bit uh, concerned about what exactly her relationship is going to be like between the three of them. But yes, I do agree, Layla. It does sound very creepy. Being too eager can be a problem. Yep. <laughs> Funnily enough, I feel like I can speak from experience because... Uh, Back in high school, I feel like, in hindsight, I realized I was very similar to David. In that uh, I was maybe a bit too eager to try and speak to uh, a girl. But obviously, thankfully I'm no longer like that. Amazing. And I think just seeing what David is like puts it into perspective of uh, just how bad it can be. Let's see. Grab a burger for that guy. And grab a hot dog for the other guy. Ooh, and you also have to go to the bathroom. Let's see. I think I want some hot dog as well. I need to start filling up the, the left side. Let's see. Uh, what do you want? Uh, potato chips over there. I need to get better at keeping the left side stocked with the burgers and hot dogs. Oh, especially now because that guy wants one. Uh. Maybe I can make it in time? Ah! And another one wants a burger again. Oh my goodness. People, calm down. Get you your burger. 
And another burger. Oh my goodness. They just won't stop. Why are you all so obsessed with these burgers? Uh, let's see. And make it just in time. There we go. Drink for you. And let's also restock the pillows and night masks. Black potato chips at the bottom. Let's see. Ah, uh, I should be able to get the three stars, I think. Might be a bit close, but uh Oh I see now actually. It actually says what the the tasks are on the left side. By the, the cards. I should actually have a look at those properly now, next time I see them. Maybe we'll find out what the, the raise your arms in the air gesture is supposed to mean. Because something talking yet isn't just uh, screaming for help. <laughs> Let's see, give you the hot dog. And the night mask. Uh, let's see, you want a burger. Ooh. I think we'll get the five stars easily. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Oh, that one is storage goes above. Oh, that makes that makes sense actually. How could you tell, Layla? Oh, was it because you read the? Uh, did you notice the yeah. the cards beforehand? Or is it maybe that you are an air hostess yourself? Or an air um, attendant? Okay, that, that, that does make a lot more sense than um, put your hands up in the air and scream in case of an emergency. Looks like we have a new diary entry though. My fear of water. Ooh. Alright, yeah, because uh, we actually failed our... Initially, we failed our air hostess attendant test because we were too scared to dive in the water. You managed to read it beforehand? Ah, I see, I see, I see. Good eye then, since you were able to see it beforehand. Lol, I don't think I could handle the air attendant. Yeah, like we were talking about it earlier. I assume it's a, it's a very reasonable job, but the passengers are, you know, something else. Like, like these, these flights are the ideal one, you know, where the passengers they just put their hand up, they say, hey, can I get a burger? You're like, okay, cool, yeah, here it is. There's no crying kids. There's no arrogant assholes. There's no babies crying. There's no people demanding outrageous things. Which uh, is what happens in the real world. My fear of water. Dear diary, I'm having the same nightmare again. I'm running through a forest until I stumble and fall off a cliff. I plummet into the ocean and feel the impact of my body on the water. Then... Everything goes quiet. I see a rope, but I can't reach it. And I feel my body sinking slowly into the deep. I start to drown. And then I wake up. I hate these damn nightmares. Oh. But yeah, that... I suppose we're quite lucky that we're promoted to an air attendant now because technically speaking, we did fail the test because we were too scared to jump in the water. Well, they'll start lurking, you need to get some food? Oh, no problem. Enjoy the lurk, Layla, and I hope you enjoy your food. Thanks for stopping by, obviously, though. And, uh, glad you could make it. Family business. Karen is angry. Save her... Serve her what she wants, quickly. <laughs> Speaking of, uh... Air attendants and having to deal with nasty customers... Quite literally, we're gonna have to deal with a Karen. Not my thing. I mean... I take it otherwise. I can see right through you, Kyle. I know what this is really about. It's not about you, Karen. Us. It's about us. There is no us. You've made that clear. I don't want to take the new job offer. I'm comfortable here. I like it. The money and the hours are better. You would have taken it in a heartbeat back when we were together. Exactly. 
if I were making this decision for us, I'd take it. You're only staying here for me. Just admit it. Yo, what is this? What is this gonna do now? Ooh, I quietly sneak in. Then. Karen is angry, so her what she wants quickly. Hopefully though she doesn't want anything too extreme. Let's see. And she only wants uh, four things, so I assume she'll just come in every now and then with a desire. You want a burger? Let's see then. Oh wow, this guy has a lot of hearts. Or oh, empty hearts, which means he's wants he's going to want a lot of service. Oh and here's Karen, what does she want? A packet of chops. At least she gives us some hearts as well for our service. that guy. Oh, two. May as well pick up two then. Save some time. And let's see, what do you want? A coffee in the bottom there. Mask. And let's see. Uh, the pineapple. What is that? Pineapple juice? Can't imagine what that would be. And let's prep a burger in the meantime while we serve one for the guy at the bottom there. Oh my gosh, and the lady as well also wants a burger. Let's see. Put another one in the microwave to defrost the line. I accidentally picked up a red can as well. Oh, I don't mind uh, holding it in my inventory at least. Oh, yeah, well. See, she wants one right there. Maybe it's a good thing we picked one up. Let's get that there. Oh, Karen, what do you want this time? A hot dog. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing at that. Just thought of. Karen wants a hot dog. I have the maturity of a literal child. It reminds me of uh, when I was playing Valhalla and one of the big jokes was that our boss ordered a big wiener and they, they very much played into that joke a lot talking about how our boss had a package come in a very big package that contained a, a big wiener that our boss couldn't handle all by herself uh, see. Ah, I see now That's what Layla was talking about Storage is above your heads Hostesses are available and adjust your mask. Those are the three, or at least those are those three sort of instructions. Packet of chips is what you want. And grab a soda for you. I also need to start prepping some of the, the burgers and stuff. I'm running low on those. And let's see, a light mask as well. Grab you your pillow, do your seatbelt, and then I'll also, I think, check out those people that are waiting in line. So that's quite the build up that's happening over there. Oh yeah, once again, storage is above your heads. Hostesses are available. And adjust your mask. I think the other one that I saw was also no smoking. The one where she puts her like arms in front of her chest. So sort of like making an X symbol. Uh, let's see. 
Well, you know, I, I do kind of miss her. I realize now that it makes sense, you know, having the storage above your heads. But I do prefer our initial thought of, in case of emergency, put your hands up in the air and scream like your life depends on it. <laughs> that, that would be my instructions if I were an air hostess. burgers in the meantime. And there we go. And some green chips for you. Come down here and help you out. And once again, it's the same thing. Storage, hostesses, and adjust your mask. I keep referring to them as hostesses because, you know, it's Amber that we're talking about. But I know there is a term for if it's a guy as well. Um, it's just flight attendants, right? Actually, now that I think about it. Because technically speaking, the only reason why we're here is because of Adrian, who was a flight attendant before us. So he just got too scared. So he just quit, I suppose. Well, not quit necessarily, but he uh, willingly demoted himself to security check. And so since his spot was open, we decided to swoop in and take it. End of the ship. Oh, we, we absolutely are going to make the, the three stars. Uh, let's see. Chips there. And let's check these people out and end this ship. Stunning. you into the Fish Olympics, Sushi. Oh, again with the, the topical talk. First and first we were flew, uh, flying into Japan and I'll talk about the Olympics again. Ooh, who's missing us this time? Hey, Mom. I miss you too, Mom. It's all been amazing so far. I can't believe I'm finally a flight attendant. Mom, are you okay? I'm lucky to be here. I know it was tough for you. Yeah, that whole times and thing is definitely a downside to the lifestyle. I love you too, Mom. Let's see, three more, well, I suppose five more chapters, technically speaking. Three more and two challenge levels. Where are eight hot dogs? Oh, that sounds simple enough. Hey! Another whiskey. Sir, the call button is only meant to be used mid flight, not during takeoff and landing. Do you have any idea how much I paid for this ticket, young lady? Uh, uh. I'm sorry, sir, but we've only just taken off. You only have to wait until the captain. More than your annual salary, I'd bet. So if I want another drink, that's enough. Oh, wow, okay, Amber. Getting a little, um. A little fighty here, I see. Not taking any of his bullshit. I like that. That's enough. Regulations are for your safety, sir, and they're non-negotiable. Excuse me? Who do you think... Sir, I'll bring you a drink as soon as the seatbelt light goes out, and not a second before. Damn, Amber. Look at you. Is that how you think we should treat customers, Miss Hope? Every customer is different. If they're rude and they're ignoring the rules, we need to be firm. This is a difficult job. Not everyone has the skill set to do it. You need to learn tact and self-control. To be fair, fuck that guy. Amber was 100% right in what she did. Let's upgrade this microwave though. And let's just stop preparing hot dogs so on. I like the how we don't even get to see the guy now anymore. He's like off the screen below there. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's pretty Layla's uh, 
Oh, I suppose it, maybe she's still uh, listening and lurking. But that's what we were talking about with the whole asshole passengers that you have to deal with. Like, that's technically, I think, only the second time now we've actually encountered a, an asshole passenger. Which I feel like it's very... It's a lot less than real life. You'd be encountering them a lot more often than you'd think. Oh, and now we also have towels to hand out to people as well. Uh, let's see, a burger and a blue dog. And you want a pillow. On your life jacket. Smoking is forbidden and the doors are on the sides. It's actually so much more interesting now that I now that we actually know what these hand gestures mean. Read that. Ooh, something that I didn't realize I could maybe do is also I can put the burgers and uh, hot dogs on my tray already. That'll save some time. That'll absolutely save some time. Put on your life jacket. Smoking is forbidden. And the doors are on the sides. Uh, ooh. So give you that and give you your drink. And then let's help out the person at the top there. Night mask. Let's also take the time to heat up another hot dog. There's a mask. <laughs> Muscle sitting next to this lady. Thankfully, she didn't freak out. Grab the chips for you, and also put a hot dog in the microwave salon. you up. Yep. And grab a pillow. Let's see. How many more do you have to make? Three more hot dogs still. Give you that. Help you out with that. And that's the sixth. Hot dogs, so two more left. And I think I can check out these people once I get this guy's pillow, because that'll be the the five limit, or the five person line limit. That would wait for the checkout thing. Let's see, and do your seatbelt, I think. Yep. Whoa. There we go. Make some more hot dogs, I think, just so I can free up this. Oh, and let me check these people out. Oh, I still can. Awesome. Don't want to get them blocked up too much. And oh, I didn't even notice that guy on the bottom right was waiting this whole time for that. Ooh, I don't have space in my tray anymore. Uh, let's see. Grab a blue drink for this guy. He help you out, and then give a burger to that other person. Ah, uh, one more dog, I think, and then we'll have the challenge done. Ah, I accidentally clicked on the burger. Well, I mean, wouldn't hurt to have one ready. There's still plenty of time to do another hot dog, so I'm not too stressed about that. Do the put your life jacket on, smoking is forbidden, 
and the doors are on the sides. And there we go, that should be the... Oh, as soon as I take it out of here. That's the challenge done. There we go. Put on your life jacket. Smoking is forbidden. And the doors are on the sides. Just want a pillow as well now. Let's grab that. Night mask and some green chips. And do the little tray mini game for you. I wonder what the salad looks like. Ooh, a burger. Interesting. And I think these two people are going to be the last customers, or passengers rather, that we are going to tend to. Yep, there's the end of the shift. Doors are on the sides. And just wait for him for the sky, I suppose, now. A pillow. There you go. Let's check these people out at the top as well. And that is the end of the ship. So, this guy was being rude? Yeah, I know if I acted too politely, he would have just kept going. I know the type. You did the right thing. Karen should see that. She hates me. I just don't get it. You know, you should ask Hank his opinion. He's pretty good at dealing with stuff like this. Ah, old man Hank. Are they gossiping about me? You worry too much, Karen. Amber's great for this job. She failed the exam. Plus, she has no formal training. We should hire another candidate. Not so fast. You need to give her a real chance. It's only been a few weeks. What if we crash land on water? She couldn't even jump into the pool. It's highly unlikely. Crash landings are rare. Boy, if that isn't foreshadowing, I don't know what is. Cars may be dangerous death traps, but planes rarely have to ditch. You know that. That's not the point. This job is about handling emergencies and the tests are in place for a reason. And you know about her past. Sometimes I wonder if you just hired her out of pity. That's enough, Karen. Pity never helped anyone, and it plays no part in my decisions. I know. I'm sorry. It's just with her past. This conversation is over, Karen. My decision is final. Amber stays for now. <laughs> she's an actual Karen? I mean, yeah. Like, she's even got the hairstyle down and everything. Like I was saying, I imagine her hair is naturally blonde, but she just dyes it black. To, make her, to give her that extra bit of edge. And she's so edgy and cool. Oh, minigame mayhem. We get to do the fun little minigames now. But that really is making me wonder about the whole past thing. Because now we also with that diary entry that we just read about um, how she's been even having nightmares about drowning and stuff like that. Or, or, or falling in the water. Really makes me wonder just what exactly is Amber's past. Ah, uh, there we go. Like you were saying, never gonna give you up. Like, the amount of lore. This, a game like this doesn't deserve this much lore. Considering what this game is. But I'm glad it's there. It adds a little bit of uh, spiciness to the story. Or to the game, rather, sorry. Hostesses are available. And adjust your mask. Ah! One more and we should be able to get the three diamonds. 
Oh, there we go. May as well go for the maximum score possible there. Three diamonds, there we go. Yeah! 18, what is the next amount we need for a new decoration? 22, okay. Humans make mistakes. Never run out of stock of plates. Never run out of stock of plates. What? Oh, I assume it's the, the hamburgers and the hot dogs. Ah, we're all sad now. Are we going to drum it out to cheer ourselves up? We're not even going to drum it out. I'm hopeless, Sushi. They're going to fire me. I know it. Even you'd be better at my job than me. At least you can swim. I mean... You okay, Amber? You're looking a little blue. I'm blue. That's just the uniform. Nice try. You can't fool a mother, you know? Try again. It's just... I really don't think I'm cut out for this job. I don't deserve it. That's not true at all. You're great at this. I always knew you would be. But I failed my test. And Karen thinks I'm unqualified. To be fair, Karens would always think people are unqualified. People like Karen sometimes mistake tests for real life. But a test is just one way of measuring something. We aren't machines. We're more complicated than that. You have a character and passion. Is that really enough? I'm not so sure anymore. What matters most is your willingness to learn. I mean, I've made tons of mistakes. Oh yeah? Like what? One time, I accidentally left a meal in the oven and the whole plane smelled like burnt feta cheese. And that's just one mistake among hundreds. It's all just part of being a person. Wow, at least it sounds like you should be fired because you shouldn't be making those types of mistakes. But, oh well. Oh, what did she just... Did she just swallow a pill or something? What was that? To be fair, Elise does uh, take anti-anxiety pills, so... It's entirely possible that that was a pill she just downed in front of us. Uh, but let's see, let's... Make some burgers and hot dogs so that we don't run out of the plate stuff. And give you some chips. And a pillow. I wonder if I can have up to four uh, of this stuff ready at a time. Oh, nope, we can't. Only three maximum. I have to be very careful then with uh, how I manage the thing. So let me actually put a, a burger on the tray so long. Oh, well... What timing as well? Just as the guy wanted a burger. Let's see, and you want a hot dog. I have to be very careful now. Make sure I keep them stocked up all the time. Uh, a red drink. Wait, you want a red drink again? Didn't you just get one from that mini game? drink and while we're at it let's also heat up another burger oh i need to refill the, the pillows those are some pro air hostess tactics <laughs> i wonder if uh imagine that's what real air hostesses do you know they talk about hey i'm gonna warm up the burger song you manage this and that and that and that like, it actually makes me wonder what the, the training would be like for that. Uh, let's see, put on your life jacket. Like, could you imagine if Aerostasis actually did stuff like this in uh, real life? 
You see, you see them zooming up and down the aisles. And they also have like a tray of three items like the, the hot dog, the burger and everything all on hand at once. Okay, I have to be careful now. There's only one left of each of them, so I need to refill them. Let's see, a mask and a blue drink. There we go. We have a little bit of a buffer now. Uh, a hot dog for you. Okay, we have two, so there will still be one left over. Let's see. Let's buckle you up. Oh, whoops. I clicked on the person behind her. Ooh, I ran out of pillows. Let me restock that up. And get you those things that you want. Buckle you up. And, ooh, okay. Very careful now. Let's put another hot dog since this guy wants one as well. Also, I feel like normally this is always done at the start of the flight, right? I don't imagine aerospaces would have to do this every single time. People ask, hey, what, uh, what, do, what do I do if we crash again? Hey, uh, where are the doors to the exit again? And every single time you have to go up and do the whole spiel of the luggage goes above you. The, uh, the doors are to the sides. Air hostesses are available. And all that stuff every single time. And let's see. Like for example right here where this lady wants uh, information again. I feel though like there are some... Uh, like I said, obviously this is very unrealistic to actual flights because there aren't a bunch of dickheads ordering or like bossing the, the flight crew around making unreasonable requests and stuff like that but I feel like there are some other um, like mini games that could be added for example having to make people shut up you know uh, having to help people fall asleep having to calm people down I suppose there was that one kid earlier on that we had to keep calm But this is in no way indicative of the amount of shit that air flight attendants have to go through, I think. Let's see. Let's keep another burger up. Like, where's the stopping a brawl from happening between two passengers? Where is that minigame? Where is the unclogging the toilets and stuff like that? Ooh, okay, let's... Actually, that's a burger in there already, right? Okay. And then buckle this guy up. It's weird. In the, in the one challenge, or the one level where the challenge is to keep the burgers and hot dogs stock, it's the best one I've done in so far. I guess maybe because in all the previous levels I've sort of been neglecting the keeping those stocked up. So only now do I realize the importance of it and how much nicer and easier it is when I actually keep them stocked up and ready. Because I, I was constantly hitting them, having these run out of items earlier on. Uh, oops, I forgot to pick up a hot dog. There we go. Ooh, okay, let's make sure I stock up a burger before I do that guy's request. There we go. And, oh, that's the end of the shift, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll get the three stars easily. Especially with this, this combo about to happen right here. There we go. So Amber, any hot dates coming up? What about that cute doctor? Saving a life together is a pretty good story to tell your kids. Uh oh. Speaking of dates, 
Uh, speaking of, here's Mr. Mr. Love, dude, over here. Hey, Amber. Flying on your airline tomorrow. Hopefully I'll see you there. Well, speak of the devil. Which good-looking man is that from? You can show off your beautiful flight attendant badge to him. If Karen lets me keep it. We believe in you, Amber. You should too. Ooh, maybe that uh, that prophecy of the air hostesses kissing the passengers and providing some extra services will come true when Clark is on board. At least help me clear at least in the plane. As yeah, again, this is just no different from normal, I think, other than just a skin swap, I suppose. Uh, let's also use what we learned from the previous level and uh, keep some of these stuff stocked up. To make sure that we don't run out. And let's see. There we go. Now we have three hot dogs and three burgers all fired up and ready to go. Let's get you that hot dog. Actually, I think after this one, we'll get enough uh, enough diamonds for the new decoration for our diary as well. And that is going to be exciting. Let's give you your chips and your red soda drink. And a burger as well. Let's also not get the chips at the bottom left there. Ooh, oh, I need another pillow. So let me restock that as well. Ooh, we're starting to run a little bit low on burgers, but I do have one in the microwave already, right? Yeah, there we go. Mm, let's see, the black potato chips. Put your hands in the air. Smoking is forbidden. And the doors are on the sides. Uh, whoops. Got a packet of chips. A few towels. I think those are towels at least. Why would people want a towel on a plane? Oh, unless it might be a blanket actually. A blanket makes much more sense. I as I can get cold up there. That is the thing, right? At high altitudes, you get colder, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why you, you always see snow on mountaintops. Although I imagine... Wouldn't planes be kept rather warm anyway? Right, let's do your seatbelt up. I'm surprised, uh... I'm surprised at how evenly spread out the the toilet people are. There hasn't been a scenario where, you know, one lady goes to the bathroom and then, very coincidentally, a guy just happens to want to go to the bathroom at the same time. But I suppose that is just the stereotype of, you know, the Mile High Club. Let's see. Because again, you always hear stories about it, but I imagine... Or at least I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't know how often things like that actually happen in real life. You, your blanket. Oh yeah, especially now, like, this whole package makes sense. You have a pillow and a night mask. Surely then it's because you want to go to sleep, so... Having a blanket as well makes perfect sense. A lot more than having a towel. Let's see. Give you that. And ooh, we're starting to run quite low on the, on the plate dish items. I need to work a bit better on that. Especially because she wants a burger there in the corner. 
Uh, let's put one in the microwave salon. And then help this guy out. We pretty much use whatever downtime we have to prepare extra burgers and hot dogs. because it's relatively fast actually to set up the defrosting of the burger and, micro uh, burger and hot dog. Let's grab another one of those. And while we're at it, let's defrost another hot dog. I oh, should probably restock these as well now since we're running out of masks. So let me check these people out. Awesome. You want to go to the bathroom? There's a lot of hearts, so I assume he's going to want a, a food item when he gets back. So let's prepare some of these in advance. Okay, blue drink for you. There's another guy waiting behind him, so let's quickly deal with this guy over here. Buckle you up. And give you a red drink, and also while we're there, grab a pillow. That man. Ah, there we go. Somebody wants a burger. is almost over it looks like so let's handle you and oh need to refill this right. okay two people want burgers but thankfully i have to already prepare and there we go that is the end of the shift enough for a new decoration. What is this one? Looks like a film or a film reel. Or like a movie ticket I suppose. Very odd thing to put on our diary but sure. And I think this will be the last level for today. Uh, level 40. Thunderstruck. The sky is looking pretty threatening. Reassure the scared passengers. If the passengers are scared, I hope they're doing the the very patent raise your hands in the air and scream for your life move. Dr. Clark! I didn't know we had a returning hero on board our flight today. Hey Pamela, it's nice to see you. Hey Elise, how are the kids? As exhausting and adorable as ever. It's great to see you again too, Amber. Did you get my text? Congrats again on your new job. I'm so happy for you. Dude, this guy behind him is getting a bit <laughs> mad that we're holding up the line. Well, it's not like I really deserved it. Of course you did. Well, most people don't do well in tricky situations. But you did. You'll be great at this. Oh, yep, he's getting very mad. Uh oh, Karen. Right, is that everyone? Wait for me, I'm coming. David? What are you doing here? Oh, and why are you getting so handsy? Amber, this isn't a social call. I know, I know. I didn't realize. It's my fault. I surprised her. I just wanted to see Amber hope in action. Well, prepare to be disappointed. I'm not any good at my job. 
What? Of course you are. How would you know? Well, this little surprise isn't going quite as, as, as I'd hoped. Sorry for the hold up. I'll just take my seat. David, you fuck up. Oh, you're ruining everything, David. Oh, please don't tell me he's gonna go sit next to Clark. What the heck was that? You need to calm down, Amber. Yeah, especially when you got the Bermuda Love Triangle on board here. Oh, yep, they're sitting next to each other. Uh-oh. Oh, uh, goodness. David's gonna realize how inadequate he is. Uh, let's see. Grab a pillow for you. Goodness, David. But yeah, you can see now what I mean when he is very eager to get in there. Going out of his way to get on a flight with us. I feel like that is the most extreme thing you could do. It's almost, I swear, it's kind of romantic. It's like the. Those scenes where, you know, it's the girl's about to get on the plane, she's about to fly away and, you know, leave forever. But then the guy shows up at the, the airport and is like, Wait, don't go! Please don't go, I still love you! And all that stuff. Except here, you know, there's no established relationship, so it's kind of pointless. And it's just weird. And let's see. I suppose judging by the... The three or the three says quadrants around this challenge. We only have to do the whole calming down people you know, three times throughout this level. Let's see there. Uh, grab a mask for you. Blue drink for you up here. Uh oh. There's that turbulence again. Alright, I suppose we have to calm this guy down. Let's do that quickly. Ah! Don't worry, everything is under control. I tried to quickly click the mouse, but uh, it accidentally forwarded through his text. Uh, let's see though. Let's get done with you so we can help out that lady behind you. Mm, where do you want the grapes? And ooh, burger. Let me put one in the microwave salon since we're running out. Microwave. All right, it. Let's also prepare another one, just in the meantime. Let's also take these people out here so we can get this other lady into line. Awesome. To refill the stuff because we're running out of blankets. Uh oh, there's more turbulence. The sky is looking really dark. Don't worry, ma'am. Our pilots are trained for this. Something tells me that uh, things are about to go south. Hmm. 
I mean, to be fair, at the start of the game, we did have like that. I'm guessing it's a flash forward, right? Or a premonition of the future where we were at an air hostess and then all of a sudden we were struck by lightning because the pilots tried to fly through a thunderstorm. So maybe we'll see just what that whole thing was about. Grab a burger here. Oh wait, whoops. I, I think I just tried to feed her a frozen burger. <laughs> Oopsie. Let's, see. Let's hand this lady an actual hot dog. And let's see, a red drink. Put on your life jacket. Smoking is forbidden. And the doors are on the sides. you your burger uh -oh, and that's the last bit of turbulence so let's quickly calm this lady down excuse me miss is everything okay it's just some turbulence ma'am everything's going to be all right Salon. A blue drink and a blanket. Let's quickly grab that. Grab all of these actually. I'm so glad that you can click very far ahead, like in some style where like you can click a, a long list of talks beforehand. And then she'll do them one by one in the order that you click them in. So you don't really have to worry about the timing. As long as you just get them in order, then you'll be fine. And let's see, a red drink there. Shift is almost over as well. Uh, let's see, pillow. Yard here. Ooh, two burgers. Uh, actually, yeah, they'll be fine. I don't think we'll have to warm up another one. I doubt there'll be another person who wants one. Especially since that is the end of the shift. And there we go. That's the end of that level. Ominous music. Wow. It's wild to see a storm from the inside. Ugh. Don't say things like that. Let's reassure the passengers and make sure everyone stays seated. Hey everybody, this is Kyle, your captain speaking. Looks like we're strolling through a little bit of turbulence here, but there's absolutely nothing to worry about. Our flight attendants kindly request that you remain seated and calm. We'll pass through the storm shortly. Kyle, we should have steered clear of this. It's fine. We'll see when you have more experience. Storms aren't such a big deal. Kyle, we should change course. You don't trust me either? Guess I'm not surprised after what happened in... We need to take manual control. Copy. I'm on it. Okay. We need to keep everyone calm. I need to keep me calm. Purpose will, purpose will keep you calm, and your purpose is to help the passengers. Amber's right. Let's check with the passengers. Make sure everyone's alright. Oh. Kyle? It's time to back out. This is too much. He's right, Kyle. Trot us an alternate course now. 
close call. What the? Plane's going down, isn't it? Yep. Never gonna give you up. I. I think I. I'll have to agree with you. Kyle, we're falling. It's just some turbulence. Everything will be fine. Oh, uh, yep. This is the the cutscene that happened right at the start of the game. So it's all coming like full circle now. Amber, could you come here, please? I wonder. What's going on? Look at the sky. <gasps> What's happening outside the window? Oh, okay. I didn't get to make the jump joke I made at the start of the game. But we saw a loading screen. Oh, we should have flown around the storm. The right wing and the fuselage have been hit. Amber, you dumb bitch, how'd you fall down? I just like stamp all over a corpse. <laughs> Beep. Brace yourself. Mayday, mayday, we're going down. We need to take our seats. This is getting rough. But, but, she's right. We're no use to anyone if we get hurt. Are you guys not going to buckle yourselves up? Come on. All right, everybody. Please stay seated and remain calm. Our plane has been damaged by lightning and we'll need to perform an emergency landing on water. You need to help yourself before you can help others, Miss Hope. Where is your oxygen mask? The flashbacks. Prepare for contact in three, two, one. <gasps> Whatever happened after that? A new mini game, medical kit, healed passengers by applying bandages to their injuries. Hmm. Boy, oh boy. Whatever happened after that impact, we'll never know. Well, I say we'll never know. We'll find out the next time I play this game which will be on Thursday. Actually, first, let's have a look at this diary entry. Skyfall. <laughs> Why do we have a picture of Karen in our diary? Oh, okay, I see. That makes sense. Dear diary, I'm finally a flight attendant. I thought I was ready, but Karen's been ruthless to me. This past week, she gave me loads of work to do, and never missed a chance to criticize. This afternoon, when I tried to talk with Hank, I overheard a conversation he was having with Karen. Turns out, she really hates me. And Hank only took me on out of pity. No one really believes in me. My dream has just crashed. Well, more than your dream just crashed, oh, Amber. The, the plane itself just crashed. And yes, it was quite the cliffhanger, never gonna give you up. But, uh, I mean, judging by just the look of this, the next set of levels, I assume, you know, we survive, but uh, we'll just be on a stranded island. But, like I said, that will be a story for another day. Specifically, Thursday. Uh, where I'll be planning on playing this again, as usual, at the same time, same place. But, tomorrow I'll be streaming something that I've been putting up for quite a while. It's, um... A game that I'm sure many of you are aware of. It's a game called Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. Now, if you're aware of the game, you might be thinking, Oh, I know that game. It's uh, one person defuses the bomb, and other person, you know, reads the manual. So you might be wondering, who am I going to be playing with? Well, that's the thing. I am going to be trying to play Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes with myself. What I mean, though, is... I don't mean solo, I mean... As you can see, I'm moving around with my, my B-Roid model. But uh, in the bottom, just next to me, I have my little bongo cat avatar. So tomorrow, I'm going to be playing... Or, you know, I'll, be, I'll try my hand at almost sort of ventriloquism where I will be playing with myself. Where I'll be voicing myself as a B-Roid character, you know, as a bomb diffuser. While I'll also be trying to have my bongo cat as a... Uh, the manual reader. I don't know how 
it'll go. Might be, might make it harder, might make it easier, but uh, it'll definitely be interesting. So hopefully you guys can uh, come by and watch that. Thank you for the stream. Glad you could finally catch one. I'm glad you could stop by, Layla. And uh, hopefully that food that you said you had to get was delicious. Uh, I know I had some nice spaghetti bolognese for dinner myself not too long ago. But yes, thank you everybody for stopping by. And uh, I hope you had fun. And I hope to see you all tomorrow in the... <laughs> in what might be a very weird stream. People who don't know what's happening might think I have like schizophrenia or something where I'm speaking to myself. Uh, but I think it'll be fun. So let's see. Let's also decide on somebody to uh, raid if there is anybody. Let's see. Is uh, Glooby online? He is indeed. Uh, We're going to be raiding a friend of mine named Glooby. He's a rat that is currently playing No More Heroes 2. He actually recently had a, a big milestone where he did a karaoke stream, which was very fun. So uh, yes, that will be our raid target. Once again, thank you all for coming by today. Uh, never gonna give you up and later. And any locals in chat as well. So uh, let's give a raid message as well. Because I'm unoriginal and can't think of anything new, it'll just be the typical Shanna hello. That is our raid message that will be for uh, Glooby. And so, thank you all for joining me today. I hope you had a great day. And I hope that uh, I was able to make it a little bit better with my stream. As Once again, my name has been Shanaha or Shanaha or Shanaha. Pretty much whatever you say. There's no wrong way. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.